to Douglas Baptist Church and we're so glad you could join us this week. My name is Brittany and I'm Jillian. For a music night, join us on July 25th at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Full details and registration will be available this week. Here at DBC, we are looking at creative and innovative ways to connect with all folks during this unique time we are living in where we are not able to meet as we regularly do. A new initiative we are starting is called Adopt a Senior. We are looking for people and families who are willing to spend one to two hours each week making a special connection with a DBC senior. Some ideas for this time would be by connecting with them with our services, having a meal with them, taking them for a drive, or simply visiting them. Of course, all of these activities need to be done safely according to health regulations and comfort levels of all involved. If you are interested in being a part of this ministry or you would like more information, please contact Sydney Grass. Tobias Toby Alexander was born April 3, 2020 to parents Adam and Diana Seymour. Even though he is only a few weeks old, he is happy, curious, energetic, and full of personality. Like most of us aspire to, he spends his days sleeping, eating, and having every whim catered to. His favorite things are car rides, fuzzy pajamas, and the ceiling fan. We would like to bless and support the Seymours by showering them with notes of encouragement and gift cards. Walmart, Costco, Sobeys, and Carter's are a few suggestions. Cards can be dropped off to Cindy Grass at 600 Clemens Drive or contact us and we will arrange for Cindy to pick them up from your house. Today we will be worshiping through communion after the service on Zoom. If you could have bread or cracker and a drink ready, everyone is welcome to join us there. The link for the service will be put in the comments and Pastor Peter will give full instructions later in the service for those watching now and listening on our phone stream. For complete information that is happening at DBC, you can visit our website at douglaschurch.ca and our operational plan is there as well. Welcome to worship this morning. We are looking forward to having a time of singing and uh, worshiping through prayer and uh, worshiping through just digging into God's word together. And uh, regardless of where we find ourselves in life or even where we find ourselves in our faith journey, it's pretty safe to say we have at least one thing in common. I know we have many things, but the one thing I'm referring to is that we all suffer from fear. Uh, we suffer from fear of disease, fear of inability, fear of death or fear of the unknown, fear of speaking in front of a camera and having people listen to you or fear of speaking in front of a camera and not having anybody <laughs> listen to you. You know, just fear that can leave us feeling broken down and defeated and even paralyzed. But in God's word, it says that with his love, he calms our fears. And in Zephaniah 3.17, actually the whole verse says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful song. You know, regardless of where you find yourself today, I just really pray that you take comfort in knowing that God is among us, that he is a God that saves, he is a God that rescues. And if today you are feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling fearful, if you're feeling unworthy, just know that God takes delight in you. Know that he is with you and know that he is joyfully singing victory over you. Please join us in singing.
good to be able to worship with you today and we're going to continue in worship by praying together as we prepare to go into God's Word. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that we have this opportunity to proclaim your holiness, to proclaim your goodness, to worship together. And Father, as we go into your Word today, will you speak to us? Will you make your presence known to us? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have a Bible, I would encourage you to get it and to open it and to be ready to use it. I'll be going into a number of different passages this morning as we continue this journey that we started last week. This idea that we uh, have within God's Word an opportunity to understand a better way, the one another way. And God cares about how we treat one another. He cares about our relationships. And so this summer, we're going to look at a number of those one another passages. And they will help us to understand what it is to interact, how we should interact, and the characteristics that should come as we interact with one another. Last week, we started with the foundational principle, uh, love one another. Everything else grows out of that this love that we are to have from one another. And so today as we go into God's Word, we understand that, uh, that humility is to grow out of the love we have from one another. And we're going to see that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. So if you have your Bibles with you, I want to encourage you to open to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. And if you don't, it'll be on the screen. But it's good to, to have God's Word in your hand. And if you don't have a Bible, I would encourage you to get one. I would encourage you to reach out and we would love to provide one for you. So 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, reading from the NRSV today. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. All of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Our focus today is reflected in this particular sentence. All of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. Peter tells us very clearly that as we interact with each other, we are to be humble. He says you are to clothe yourselves with humility. The Bible has these rich um, metaphors and, and this imagery that it provides us with. And today it's this idea of clothing ourselves. You know, we get up every day and we put on clothes. We should anyway. And, and so just as we put on clothes, we're told in the scripture today that we are to put on humility. And consciously, every day, we get up and we get dressed. And so consciously, intentionally, every day, we have to put on humility. You know, if we were to understand this passage in the original language, we would see a word here that is very significant. The word clothe. Clothe yourself. See, that word is a rare word in the original language, clothe. In our word, in our language, it just looks kind of plain and simple and to the point. But in the original language, it would have meant something very specific. To clothe yourselves in context would be to put on an apron. To put on an apron 
and to put on an apron in preparation for serving. So when folks that read this particular Bible verse many years ago, when they read it, they would have understood that word to mean, oh, you're putting on an apron because you're getting ready to serve. You see, to humble ourselves is to serve one another. And so today I think I'm gonna leave this apron on I know it looks pretty good on me, doesn't it? And you know what? I, I'm not embarrassed to wear an apron. I wear an apron at home sometimes if I'm doing the dishes. Um, I don't cook, so I don't wear an apron to do that. Don't get the wrong idea there. But when I do the dishes sometimes to keep myself clean, I put on an apron. And so we are to, to put on an apron in preparation for serving. That's what we, we read here today, if we read it in context, if we were to read it in the original language. We are to dress ourselves in humility as we relate to one another. That's what the New Living Translation says, dress yourself. See, every day we have to dress ourselves, and, and so we need to put on this apron of humility. Well, sometimes, sometimes we don't. And sometimes pride gets in the way. In fact, pride and humility don't go together. Opposites don't attract in this regard. And, and pride can easily creep into our lives. In fact, pride is all too natural sometimes. Pride is like the, the weeds that grow. They seem to grow even when the weather isn't good. The weeds seem to grow. Do you notice that? It's been really hot here lately in Douglas. And, and even though my lawn won't grow, the weeds grow. So I have a, a lawn full of weeds and not grass. Because they seem to grow and they don't, it doesn't take much effort at all. It doesn't take any effort on my part for the weeds to grow. And pride can be like that. If we're not careful, pride can grow. And that's not what we want growing in our lives. You know, and sometimes even the culture, where we live and how we live, encourages that within us. You know, there was a very popular uh, slogan in a fast food chain that said, have it your way. Have it your way. That's, that kind of feeds into our pride. You know, we can have it just the way we want it. Uh, Sometimes it's said in business, the customer is always right. Well, any of you that are in sales and in business and any of you who have ever dealt with people know that the customer is not always right. Sometimes they're, we're all wrong sometimes. So how can the customer always be right? But that feeds into our pride. You see, sometimes we're, the culture around us just helps to feed and cultivate our pride. But it can grow up oh so easily. But this passage of Scripture is saying, no, no, you have to make a conscious effort to put on the apron of servanthood, to put on humility as you deal with one another. Humility is hard. It doesn't always come naturally. In fact, sometimes it seems like pride grows easier and, and comes more naturally. We want our own way. We see it in kids as they grow. We have to help them understand they can't always get their own way. And so, humility can be hard. You know, I remember when I got my first job and I remember being, well, probably a little bit proud. And I remember that it was at camp and I remember that a lot of people had applied and I remember I got the job and I remember showing up and yeah, there was probably some pr pride. I was probably feeling pretty good about myself. It was probably hard to be humble in that moment. And I remember the, my boss, I remember the director of the day I showed up and I was keen and I was ready and I remember he handed me this. Well, not this one exactly, but you know what I'm saying. He handed me a bucket and he handed me a toilet bowl brush. And he said, well, your job today is to clean every bathroom in the campsite. Maybe he saw a little bit of my pride. Maybe he just wanted to remind me what it was to be humble and serve. And so off I went to clean the bathrooms. The interesting thing is, it wasn't much later and he came along with another brush and was cleaning the stall beside me. Maybe to teach me a little bit more about humility. 
You see, humility isn't thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. C.S. Lewis said, said that. So it's, it's not devaluing yourself, it's thinking of others, loving others, understanding that even those of us in positions of leadership and authority can serve, can clean toilets, can be humble. Humble, being humble and, and humility is costly. You see, we have to choose sacrifice. We sacrifice for the sake of others. Jesus understood what it was to be humble. In fact, he is the example, the greatest example in history of what it is to be humble. He, he sets the bar, you could say, for humility. And I want to, to, to hold that example out in front of you today. I want to point to Jesus today. I want to say, Jesus is the one we are to follow when it comes to being humble. You see, because humility is the Jesus way. How do we know this? Well, we know it for all kinds of reasons. But one of the reasons we know it is because there was this event that took place in his life. As he was preparing for the greatest act of humility in human history, as he was preparing to go to the cross, he had a meal with his disciples. And at this meal, well, let me read it for you. Let me read what happened at this meal. In John chapter 13, verses 3 to 5, we read this. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Jesus, the Son of God, the Divine One, He knew all of the power that He had been given. Everything had been given into His hands, and yet He chose to serve. He chose to, to wash His disciples' feet. What an act of humble service we see in Jesus. And consider this. Not only was he washing the feet of his very closest followers and friends, he was washing the feet of his betrayer. Judas was there, the one that would turn him in, turn him over, the one that would betray him. So the humility it must have taken to go from person to person to the betrayer, that is servanthood. That is what... Well, what he calls us to. You see, humility is a powerful thing and it has a great impact and it makes a great impression and it is even a bit confusing. Why would Jesus do that? Because he knew who he was and he knew how important it was to serve, that that is what he was called to do. He was called to put on, well, he put on the towel of humility, the towel of servanthood. Because he led by such a powerful example. You see, because later on in John chapter 13, verses 12, 13, and 14, this is what we read. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you are also ought to wash one another's feet. Jesus knew exactly who he was. The disciples knew exactly who he was. He was the Lord. He was the Messiah. He was the teacher. And he said, follow the teacher's lead. Wash one another's feet. Serve one another. Humble yourselves. Jesus invites us to be humble. Humility is our way. If we profess to follow Jesus, humility is our way. Jesus wasn't telling us, go around washing each other's feet. Jesus was telling us, take on the attitude of a servant. Be humble. Clothe yourselves in humility as you deal with one another. 
That's not always easy, friends. Humility is hard. It's costly, but it's powerful. And Jesus takes it a step further. He says, don't only humble yourselves when dealing with the people you care about. Humble yourselves when you're dealing with people that will betray you. Humility is our way. There is no room for that sense of entitlement or you owe me. We are to be humble. If we're to grow in humility, we need to grow in grace. If we're to grow in humility, we need to grow in grace. Because if we understand grace, if we've experienced grace, if we've experienced the love of God that we don't deserve, but that He is willing to give us, if we've experienced that, then it's a natural thing to then want to share it with others. And we can't think that highly of ourselves because we understand who we were. But we understand that why we can... Well, why we can have such confidence is because of the grace of God. And so to grow in humility, we need to grow in our knowledge of grace, in our experience of grace. See, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10, he said, But by the grace of God, I am who I am. Friends, it's only by the grace of God that I am who I am, that you are who you are. It's not because I'm better than you. It's because God has showered his love and grace upon me. I'm not better than anyone. But by the grace of God, he allows me to stand before you today. And we can each and every one of us say the same thing if we've experienced the grace of God. And when we experience the grace of God, it then allows us to interact and to show love to other people. Because we ourselves have experienced love and grace. It's a humbling thing. When we admit who we are, admit the sins that we've committed, and realize that God still loves us and has a place for us and calls us into a wonderful life by His grace. And so let us be humble, friends. Let us not think more highly of ourselves than we should, but let us not think less of ourselves than we should. Because God created us and we are His children. And He offers us His grace. And we simply need to embrace it and, and receive it. And when we do, we then offer it to others humbly. We're able to deal with others humbly. We're able to put on the apron of servanthood and serve not just the people that are easy to serve, but the people that betray us. That is the Jesus way. That is the one and other way. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to pray. Pray and ask God to reveal anything in you, any, any prideful ways, anything that, that you need to surrender to Him. You see, we need to pray. If we hope to put on, to clothe ourselves with humility, we need to pray. We need to pray that our attitude will be right, so then our actions will be humble. We need to listen and we need to learn. I've realized that as of late, as I, as I think of some of the things that are going on in our world, I've taken a posture of humility because I'm, I need to listen and I need to learn. And will you take on a posture of humility? It's easy to offer your opinion. It's easy to post. But will you listen and will you learn and will you take on a posture of humility? Because to be humble is to listen and to learn. And I know I need to do that. When it comes to the injustices we see in the world, when it comes to some of the, the systematic racism that is present, I need to listen and I need to learn before I can ever speak and have an opinion. We need to humble ourselves. And we need to not be afraid to ask for help. You see, because to humble ourselves is to ask for help and not be afraid. Sometimes we're too pride, filled with pride and we won't ask for help. And so, may we make room. Because ours is a way of humility. It is the Jesus way.
What do you need to surrender to God today? Friends, His way is better. And although it's not easy to give things over to God, it's not easy to surrender, it's not easy to admit and to let go of some, some of the pride and the, the things in our life that we hold on to. If we only will, His way is better. The scriptures say in James 4 verse 10, humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. He will lift you up. Surrender to the Lord today. Heavenly Father, will you help us? Will you help us to identify things in our life that we need to surrender? Will you help us to identify arrogance and pride in our life that we need to let go of and confess and surrender? Will you help us today to humble ourselves? Because your way is better. Your way is better. Help us to deal with each other in love and in humility, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're gonna to continue to worship and we're gonna do that uh, through Zoom. And so uh, we'd invite you to join us. The link has been posted in the comments on our Facebook page. It was sent out to uh, anybody that gets our Friday update. You would have got a link for Zoom there. And I wanna invite you to join us and come and celebrate communion. And we'll be talking more about how Jesus humbled himself humbled himself even to the extent that he would be willing to die for us. If you're listening today on our phone stream, and many of you do, uh, listen uh, on the phone every week. And we've worked this week to try and find a way so that you can join us for communion too. So I wanna invite you, if you are listening on the phone stream, you'll be hanging up, and then you should get a call back in about 10 minutes. And uh, when you get that call, we hope you'll answer it. We hope you'll join us. You should be able to hear our time of communion on our, our Zoom call. You won't be able to talk to us, but you will be able to hear as we participate in communion together. And so I just wanna invite you, uh, those of you who are listening on our phone stream, if you don't get a call, that automated call in 10 minutes, then don't be afraid to call the one, uh, the toll-free number, the one eight three three number, and um, you should be able to come in on that time of Zoom communion as well. And so we trust and pray that that will all work out because we just want to come together and uh, and share in this time of eating the bread and drinking in the cup. And remember, anything bread-like, cracker-like, and any type of liquid will do. It's more that we're coming together as God's people to remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're invited. Uh, God bless you and peace be with you.